Okay, we're going to take what we learned in basic shading, basic rendering, and reflectivity. And now we're going to start to draw a more beautiful and complex vehicle. We're going to start with a rear three-quarter view. So we're going to set up our box, set up our wheels, just like we've been doing. We're going to make this a beautiful, sexy sports coupe. Putting in some beautiful haunches and a teardrop shaped cabin. You know, lining our front door and our A pillar with the front wheel. So now we're giving that cabin its teardrop shape. Fastback profile. So as I'm drawing this, I'm beginning to pay attention as to which surfaces are going to be facing towards the ground and which surfaces will be facing toward the sky. And it helps to draw section lines. So you'll see that I've already drawn a center line section. Now I'm drawing the horizon line, where the horizon line is going to be. So everything below that horizon line is going to be rendered in ground tone, and everything above will be in some sort of sky tone. Drawing the doors also helps to define the sections. I also like to draw section lines through the wheel centers. So you can see I'm drawing a cross section of the vehicle where the rear wheel center is. That's going to help me also determine which surfaces are going to be facing towards the ground, which surfaces will be facing the sky, the sky at the horizon line, which is a bright shade of white, and the sky tones facing directly above, which is going to be a deeper shade of blue. Having a working drawing like this where you can really see the sections creates a good roadmap to understanding where to put your light and shadow. So just like we talked about, a reflective surface is comprised of a horizon line, a ground tone, and a sky tone. And at the horizon line, there's a crisp delineation. And, and that's where you have your deepest contrast. So as I said before, the sky tone will be rendered on the surfaces facing the upper half of the vehicle. Everything below that water line will be rendered in a ground tone. So here I am starting to put in the ground tone, but there's this little section of the rear bumper that's turning itself back up towards the sky. So that's going to remain white. Drawing that lower half of the door and really darkening the shadows below that crisp horizon. So now I'm starting to put in the sky tone and that's the deepest part of the sky directly above the vehicle. And that's, a, that's going to be a soft gradation. But then on the rear quarter, there's a part of that that's also facing directly above. So that's going to get the deeper sky tone as well. But right along the shoulder of the vehicle, which is closest to the horizon, that's going to be the, the lightest part of the vehicle. Because again, the sky at the horizon is almost white versus the deep blue directly above. I'm just starting to darken my, my lines as I get more confident. Now when it comes to the glass, I'm going to give it an even stronger reflectivity. 
So I'm just putting in a deeper tone, uh, but I'm leaving a white highlight along the far side of the glass, just to, just to give it a, a more glass-like appearance versus the body color. Same thing with the, the side glass. So you can see that having a road map of section lines really helps to determine where to put your light and shadow when you're describing a complex vehicle shape. And a sexy sports coupe is one of the most complex shapes you can draw. Definitely much more complex than a pickup truck or a minivan or something boxy like that. But just keep drawing those section lines. It always helps to have a working drawing where you, you've got all the section lines worked out. You can always do another overlay and do a cleaner drawing. But having that road map is a great way to figure out what's going on in your body sections and then to put the light and shadow in the right places to communicate the shapes and forms that you want.